Hello, Honest to God listener. This is producer Ben, and I just wanted to come on for just a second and let you know that everybody on this episode thought it was going to come out on All Saints Day. Turns out it comes out the Saturday beforehand. A little bit of mix up there, so if you hear us talking about how it's All Saints Day, that's why. Everybody have a happy Halloween. Have a happy All Saints Day. Thanks so much. Enjoy the show. All right. Hello and welcome. I want to open the show today by talking about how, from Gaston's perspective, I think that he didn't do anything wrong. And I'm gonna, that has nothing to do with the topic today, but I do want to defend that point for five seconds. I, that's really been on my heart. I think we need to go on to that. Afterwards, we're going to be talking about our topic today, which is the saints, right? It yeah. is All Saints Day. Yesterday mm-hmm. was Halloween, which is why we have a particularly spooky studio today. Big <laughs> shout out to Miss Mary Swanson over there, Miss Miriam, Miss Jaira. Mark, did you help decorate? I, I did Mark not. did not help decorate. <laughs> so, so just a big thanks to these three ladies and probably producer Ben. Did you help producer Ben? I bought the decorations. Yeah. That's fair. Thank yeah. you, Ben. Thank big you, shout Ben. Out to ben. Um, <laughs> that's why we do those pledge drives here uh, so that one day we can afford to buy our own decorations here on AM 1160, The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. From Gaston's perspective, is he a jerk? Yes, absolutely. We can all agree he's a jerk. He is living in different times. All right, so let's let's come to a little bit of slack there. There's some misogyny for sure, 100%. Not defending that in our modern lens. That being said, right, Mm -hmm. he sees this very beautiful girl that he's attracted to and he wants to marry. All right, he's a little forward, but let's not pretend like the guy is like, you know, like trying to grope her or anything like that. He's just going up to her a lot. Okay. And then she disappears into the woods, right? Where a literal monster, this is fact, this is not for debate, a monster who lives in a castle kidnaps her and does not let her go. When she comes back, she's like, oh, there is a monster. It's true. Also, he's nice, which is classic (laughs) Stockholm syndrome, right? (laughs) We've all watched serial killer, true crime documentaries. And uh, yeah, and he does something that I think is actually really virtuous, which is leads a mob to kill the monster in the castle that kidnaps pretty girls from town. Mm -hmm. And I'll die on that hill. The only Mm -hmm. thing he does, right, that I take issue with is at the end, he is cowardly, right, when he tries to sneak up on the beast. But even that, if I'm killing a were-buffalo thing like the beast (laughs) is, I'm going to sneak up on it, too. I think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Honest to God. Welcome Welcome to Honest Honest to God. God. You're listening to AM 1160 The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. We are super excited to be here. Today we have Mary, we have Miriam, we have Jaira, and we have Mark in Mm -hmm. the studio. So all of you are brand new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Yes. All right. Fantastic. So you do have to do five things. Do you have five things? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Five quick facts about yourself. We're going to get into that. Mary, you got five things? I got five things. Okay. Awesome. Mary was sort of a last minute addition here <laughs> today. And we're very excited. She's also wearing killer dinosaur earrings. <laughs> so awesome. they look great. Um, but before we get into those five things, let's begin all things. Uh, begin as we do all things with a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and things shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to come together to have a discussion. Thank you in particular for this opportunity to be together on the Feast of All Saints when this will be aired. Uh, And just please be here with us in the studio today. Be here with all of our listeners, with with all, all of our community here of young adults in North Atlanta, the state of Georgia, the U.S., and beyond. Uh, thank you for all the blessings we have and help us to have a great episode today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Five Amen. things, starting with Mark. You're up, brother. Okay, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Sennett. I was born in Chicago. Uh, if I would have lived in Chicago um, growing up, I would have went to St. Viator High School where Walter Payne went to, a mm-hmm. former Chicago Bear Sweetness. Um, big big swimmer, big runner. Um, and then I also have degrees from both tech and the UGA. And then I also had a summer internship with the CIA. That's killer. Whoa. Those are really those are really good ones. And like they were prepared. They're more prepared than, oh, yeah. 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 than yeah. usual. Yeah. Um who do you pull for in uh when tech and Georgia play each other? I cheer for tech since it's my alma mater. Okay. All right, I dig it. No, mm-hmm. no, I'm not throwing any yeah. any shade against that oh. at all. <laughs> we got a lot of family who went through tech, so okay. way to go. All right, Jaira. Um, hi, I'm Jaira Hodges. Uh, I'm trying to think of the five things that I already wrote down before. Um, I'm the second oldest of nine siblings. I love 
fighting with people. Nice. Um, I started college at 14 as a dual enrollment student, so yeah. I'm graduating pretty early. Um, I actually once wrote an essay about why Gaston was the real hero of Beauty and the Beast. Shut up. Is that no, a true it's, story? It's, it's my true. favorite essay I've ever written. And I thought that when you were talking about that, you must have seen my Google form that I submitted no, right before I came. No, I had no idea. <laughs> it, I, love, I love that it's the best thing I think I've ever written. I want to clarify. It seems like such a lie, but Ben, you can back me up here. I am incredibly unorganized. And I think just <laughs> based on your knowledge of me as a human being, you can vouch for the fact that there's no way. I didn't even know that a Google form existed for Gyro. <laughs> This is true. He has never looked or heard about the Google form. I don't even know what a Google is. <laughs> I'm on record saying that. This is divine providence, I no, think. And you know what? It's you know, and that's my final fun fact is that my name, Jira Constance, means constant provider, which has something to do with the divine providence. And I said uh, earlier, I said provider of what? I guess we'll find out. So I dig it. That's <laughs> awesome. All right. So you are my favorite guest here today. Um, very excited. I, next episode, I would like to talk. Well, when we come back from the break, I want to talk about why Scar is actually not that bad of a guy. <laughs> no, I got. I have, I have strong opinions about Disney characters. This is my favorite podcast now. It, it should be. It's fantastic. <laughs> Miriam. Um, my, I'm Miriam Hodges. My five fun facts are uh, I'm a digital artist. Killer. I took piano lessons for seven years. I'm the oldest of nine children. People mix us up. They think she's the oldest one. I'm not the oldest. Y'all are sisters. We're yeah. sisters. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Congratulations on being sisters, I guess. Yeah. I don't even know how to do that. It is. But I am, it I'm is. excited. It is. It's, it's an honor. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I actually share a birthday with J.R.R. Tolkien, which I'm unordinately proud of. And um, really cool. I found this podcast through a woman who was on my campus handing out rosaries. And she was like handing out like little um papers with like um <clears throat> sources and places that you can go to find out more about the catholic faith and this podcast was on there and no i was way. like yeah so what I, campus Where um, are you in school? georgia state university okay yeah cool. and uh this episode of honest guys actually brought to you by nice old ladies who hand out rosaries on college campuses that's crazy <laughs> yeah i know it is isn't that crazy um oh and i didn't give the show number yet by the way this is uh our 1000th episode of mm -hmm. honest to yeah, God, which is super definitely. exciting <laughs> on all saints day mm -hmm. here episode 1000 today it's crazy only it was only 18 years ago that we started doing <laughs> and we're still here. Still going hard. I was still a baby. Strong. You were, I remember. Yeah. yeah. I, remember. I was new more. I had just been born. I remember we got that Google form from you. Yeah. <laughs> and, about how Gaston was the real hero of Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And then you wrote, I'm an infant as one of your facts. And we're like, this is an adult <laughs> podcast. And that's why you couldn't be on it. But yeah. you can now. I know. That was fair. I, I Looking back, I see why you rejected me at yeah. the time. It's okay, though. Yeah. yeah. All divine providence. It exactly. is. It was hey. all divine providence. All right. And last but definitely not least, judging by the overalls and the earrings alone, Miss Mary Swanson. Hi, I'm Mary Swanson. I'm 22 years old. I am studying communications at the University of North Georgia, where I'm a senior and a halfie. And then I have a itty bitty Harry Potter obsession, small. Um, Let's go. I was the winner of the most improved trophy when I hit the ball once on my elementary school softball team. Oh, Mary, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. That's great. And I'm newly engaged. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. A big shout out to a Mr. Mark with a C, not Mark with a K, <laughs> who we got in the studio today, but Mark with a C out there. Congratulations, Mark. Great job. <laughs> All right. So we're talking today's kind of an open ended discussion, right? We're, we're sort of discussing just saints and there's a saint for that, or I can't believe a saint did that. And I had a brief conversation with Miriam before we came on air. And she, I think, is more prepared to be here than any guest <laughs> in history in the 1000 episode, 18 year <laughs> history of this podcast. So we're super excited about having you here today, Miriam. And let's Let's open it up. I don't know. Y'all y'all tell me where we're going. Weird saints, uh, surprising stories about saints. What do you think? I've got a few in my, that come to my mind immediately, but because I'm so disorganized, I didn't prepare at all. So, Miriam, what you got? Um, honestly, I spent I spent several hours looking into saints um, for this, and I was super excited about it. The thing that gets me emo the most about mm. this is just, like, I want to know what exactly, like, who decided how to connect the saint with what they're the patron of because mm -hmm. a lot of times it seems like vague idea association you're just like really that's why I, like i have so many i have i have here listed like some of the first ones um whenever my family says the rosary we always have like we go in age order saying all our saints we have one saint you right know, pray for us whatever um and uh it's kind of cool because we've kind of stuck with specific ones so i have those here but i also have some 
really, really weird saints. Like, there, really, there is a saint for everything. In terms of the word association thing, it's almost like there will there'll be the patron of something really cool, but it's because like they walked by a field that had that thing. <laughs> one so, time, like, right? Yeah, exactly. Patron saint of roses. Like, I saw a rose one time, and I lo- <laughs> and I didn't even care. But we, the church knows that for some yeah. reason. Now you're the patron saint of roses, and you're like, okay, <laughs> awesome. I do a, uh, I, I work at a, at a school, a K through 12 school, and we do a little morning assembly at the beginning for the K through eight, eight, eight year olds, or I'm sorry, eighth graders. And in that morning assembly, we always do a saint of the day. And mm-hmm. so I go and I pull up my app every day and I read through the saint and then I read through the long list and I was doing the archangels. We had the feast of the archangels not too long ago. Iconic. And well, you're reading through them and it's like, Gabriel's got some pretty good ones, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, St. Michael's got like seven pages. I mean, the pages <laughs> of everything. Like yeah. every city in Portugal has St. Michael <laughs> as their pages. And then... <laughs> Poor old Raphael. He oh. gets to be like, he's a patron of like, I don't know if you've got that on there, but it, just like four things. And <laughs> he get I I was, he's the, he's the one saint that the only person that any of us know that's named after uh, the archangel Raphael is a turtle that fights crime. And I, wow. it's not fair. I hate <laughs> it's it. It's not. There's it's lots not. of Gabe's, lots of Michael's. What? I mean, Raphael is also an artist. You know what? The turtle's not even named after the archangel. It's named after the artist, and that's not fair. Yeah. So, Saint uh, Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Pray for us. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. What you got? Give us some good ones. I'm oh excited. man. Okay. Going right into it. Um, there is a patron saint of unattractive people. <laughs> I that, pray. That is <laughs> necessary, <laughs> though. I think that. <laughs> no, his I love name that. is Saint Drogo, and he is the patron of saint coffee, of coffee too. Right? Yeah. Coffee is that houses. A- coffee, coffee houses. Mm-hmm. Uh, although that's again like the weird like like the barest thrin a thread of association to them, but he's Saint Drogo and he's he's the patron saint of unattractive people because uh, during one pilgrimage he contracted a disease which like caused him to develop severe bodily deformities, and the oh. the people of the village built him like a small cell attached to the local church because so he they was didn't so want, ugly. So they, <laughs> so they didn't want to look at him. <laughs> Did he drink coffee in his small cell attached to the local church? The only thing that he ate was um, barley, water, and the Eucharist. Um, okay. And people think that like the concoction of barley and water had like something to do with coffee, even though like I think he lived before coffee was actually like a commodity. So okay, <laughs> sure. It's a weird, weird connection, but um, that's interesting. No, I I appreciate that though. I like the fact like. Unattractive people need a saint. I yeah. think that's beautiful. Mm. It's just tough because it's one of those that when you're praying, you're asking for the veneration of like you, you have to have the self-awareness to be like, I am physically, I mean, he was physically deformed, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Poor old Drogo. That's it's sad. It's really funny because we were in the car and we were thinking about weird saints right before we walked in. And one of them that I, that I searched recently was St. Dinwin, who's the patron saint of lovers. And it's because she was in love with this person that she couldn't marry. So she asked to not be in love with him. So of course the church was like, well, if, what if she was the patron saint of lovers? Anyway, I looked her up on Google and there was an image of her and I was like, oh, she was not a looker. And Miriam was like, she should pray to St. Drogo. There you go. <laughs> it so, all works out. Yeah. We all had these connections worked out. So. Um, um, I always think about St. Valentine, you know, and I think mm-hmm. I saw a meme or something. What runtime have you ever seen? St. Valentine's up in heaven, right? And it's Valentine's Day mm-hmm. and everybody's like, St. Valentine. Oh, and they're like, the heart, they're bringing him the hearts and he's sitting there like, didn't he have his head chopped off? Yeah. yeah. And he's holding right. his own head. And he's like, I was martyred. <laughs> like, I am a man. I am to, and, and they're just like, look at these butterflies. <laughs> they're pink for Valentine's <laughs> Day. I feel bad. I sh- I'm sure that when you're experiencing the beatific vision, you don't feel bad when you're being made fun of for the things that people either are pretending you're the saint of or making fun of the things you're associated with. But but still. Yeah. Do you have equal research, Mark? I've done some research. Well, you can't use St. Drogo. I- <laughs> Cross it off your list. I've got spider webs in between me and Mark. There we go. There we go. What you got, Mark? Um, so I do have a kind of an interesting story kind of with that kind of the head being chopped off with a uh, Saint Denis. He was a Saint Denis was a bishop of Paris uh, during the third century, and he was known for just being such a renowned, just such a great preacher and stuff like that. Because at the time, it was like mostly kind of more the bishops were these like great preachers and and everything like that. And then so then when he was um, so he was so successful at, at preaching like the Christian faith and stuff like that, the local pagans had him arrested and had him beheaded. 
And then, but to their surprise, uh, Dennis had like kind of picked up his head and like he walked away from the execution site, like help, like preaching the gospel. And then, so then from the, his severed head, from mm-hmm. from his severed head. Nice. So he's I just like walking along the street and stuff like that the entire time, just carrying his head along. Is he the patron saint of the decapitated? What is he the patron? I think of? he's the patron of headaches. Right? No way! Shut up! Is that true? I, th- I thought so. I really hope that's there true. There was a story about a saint who carried his head for like five miles preaching the gospel. Yes, and I think yes. he was the patron saint of headaches. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Okay, yes. cool. Don't, I fact check me on that. I'm not sure, 100 yes. sure about no, it. We're, we're going yeah, to put that like down. six miles. <laughs> yeah, and then finally he like he like collapsed <laughs> and, and and died on at that site, and then they like eventually they built like a a basilica for him, the Basilica of Saint Dennis, I think on the on the ground like where he actually like kind of. Yeah, drop, dropped that's over cool. and died. Wow, that's really cool. Um, Catholics have a weird sense of humor. They well, do. Who's actually. the? Is it Saint Lawrence who gets killed yeah. on? Yeah, who got who yes. got burned alive, okay. and then he said, "Turn me over, I'm Turn done on this side." Yeah, but he's the patron saint of barbecues. Yeah, right now, restaurant Barbecue. owners, restaurant yeah, owners, okay. cooks, and cooks. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think I think he appreciates it also in heaven. I think he's like, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that they. Yeah, I think they have a good sense of humor. I it. really like for the longest time now. I've wanted some kind of skit to do with like I don't know if it would be someone being like y'all have to saint for everything, and the other person's like yeah we do, and it's like do you have a saint for? And then it just gets more and more obscure, and the stories relating it just get more and more. And you're like this is actually real. It's like no, all this is like 100. Well, I want to. I wonder if there's anything that there is not a patron saint of. If there's not, I would just go to Saint Joseph because he's the patron yeah. of the Universal Church. That's fair. Yeah. So Be- Benedict mm-hmm. show notes on Bene- Benedict on show notes. Do you have internet on that? Okay. Hey, producer Ben. Yes. Do you think you can Google if there's anything that does not just Google? Is there anything that there's not a patron saint of? Because I'm actually really curious. <laughs> Definitely. Google that. You guys keep talking. <laughs> no, we, no, no. If we could just put the camera on Ben <laughs> yeah, and watch him Google, Googling. that would be really great. <laughs> I think that would be great material. Mary, you didn't prepare because I, you didn't know that we were going to be here for. Se- you did prepare. I did prepare. Did you make a little Mary banner at the top? Mary called no, me last but night. But I did make at- little. Chart like little squares. Okay. It. No, I dig so. it. Yeah. All right, who you got? Give me some my good. Um. So this is actually a saint that I think it was like some youth group talk that I was doing about saints or whatever, and I found her when I was looking for her, and she's slowly become my favorite, which is Saint Katira. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> she's the oldest of nine sisters, but it's important to know that she is the oldest of nine nano nanoplets. I think that's what it's they were all born at once. I remember this talk. I was there when we did this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but so basically, nine babies pop out, and the mom's like, mm, not a fan. So she orders like the maid to go and kill them and drown them in the river. And the maid felt bad, so she goes and she raises them in this little village and like raises them on Christianity. And then these Roman soldiers come in and like take over the town. And they're like trying to like marry all the sisters, and they're like, no, thank you. Um, and so then they start a guerrilla war with the Heck Roman yes. soldiers. An all woman nine uplet <laughs> guerrilla war band. Yeah. History is so cool. What? That's really cool. And wait, is she is she the only one who gets to be the saint? Yeah. Well, no. Also, I think I don't remember the sisters' names, but there's two other sisters who are also saints. I thought it was Whoa. just because she was the oldest of nine. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Mary. Well, credit. three, you know, three out of nine is not bad. No, it's yeah. not. It's pretty good yeah, in terms good. of like saint count for your kids. Miriam, mm-hmm. if you decide to create a warrior all female band, well, I guess you have male siblings, don't you? I do. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> never mind then, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, maybe you should stay idea. away from guerrilla warfare <laughs> yeah. only because you've got dudes in your family. Yeah, yeah. if they were all women, that would be prime yeah, that would be real perfect. Warfare. Yeah, yeah. We have no. Uh, no, that's fantastic. What else, Marion? What you got? Oh man, so many. Let's Give see. us a really good one. Give <laughs> us like a. One? Okay, uh, what about Saint Genesius? He's the patron saint. <gasps> that's my patron saint. Really? No, well, that's your confirmation. Okay, that's my confirmation. Saint. That's awesome. Um, oh, I love Saint Genesius. He's spotlight on Saint Genesius. Let's um, go. Yeah, he's the patron saint of actors, comedians, and torture victims. <laughs> he, he was. He was performing and on clowns. Was, yeah, yeah. Clowns. The, the big oh. three. Yeah. Comedians, clowns, and torture victims. Yeah. 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 Cover all bases. Um, yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's both for the clowns and the people watching the clowns. Right. Yeah. 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 Torture yeah. victim. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, we are fine with clowns. He was. He was uh, an ant- <laughs> on on honest to God. If you are a clown listening. Uh, it is nothing personal, and we do not discriminate, and we appreciate you listening. And in us. the church, we have a patronage for you. Yeah. We, we so exactly. welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. It was Halloween yesterday, so I'm sure there were a few. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there were a few roaming, clowns, roaming the streets. Yeah. Positive clown, like yeah. the good clowns and the scary clowns. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Um, but he was he was anti Christian and he performed in like anti anti Catholic plays and things like that. Genesius, comedies. yeah, Genesius. Genesius. Did. And um, he was portraying a catechumen that was about to be baptized. They were like satirizing the sacrament. But then he like converted suddenly on stage. Yeah, like, like a vision. Yeah, like a vision. He was like, I'm a Christian now and y'all should all be Christians too. On stage on while stage, making fun of the church. In front of nice. the emperor. <laughs> right. <laughs> who was like, no. And then when he, they, he had him tortured and when he refused to give up his faith, he just, they just killed him. Yeah. So. That's so cool. That is really cool. Isn't I like so that one cool. a lot. Yeah, he was oh. also beheaded. I had somebody, um, and this is to be a little more serious than some of these, but. I read somewhere some, I, I lurk a little bit in a lot of the, like, you'll find these anti-Catholic, just like chat rooms and stuff of like mm -hmm. ex-Catholics. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like to get mm -hmm. in and I like to read that mm -hmm. because I, I still stand by the fact that I have, I've been a practicing Catholic since I was about 18 years old. And I'm yet to find anybody who left the faith or who is not Catholic for any solid theological reason, mm -hmm. right? It's always some emotion driven thing, or I do yeah. this terrible mm -hmm. priest, or most Catholics give off this vibe for me, or I don't like the fact that they no longer do Latin, or I don't like their opinions on birth control, or I don't like this aspect of truth, or whatever it is. Um, and so I've dug through a lot of those, and I saw somebody who had, was quoting somebody, you know, some, one of these pseudo intellectual atheists, right? Like, mm -hmm. a, um, like a Dawkins or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And the quote said something along the lines of, there's no that they that the the creation of psychoactive drugs or whatever right for to treat mental health that that is the reason why there have not been any saints canonized in the last hundred years and I'm pretty positive that there have been more saints canonized mm -hmm. in the last hundred years yeah. than in the whole like rest of the church yeah, combined church history, right <laughs> yeah. yeah and it just showed this ridiculous ignorance of of history that I thought was really that like was a really Google common. search will disprove that like, yeah. Yeah. yeah easily and not just like I mean you have some that are cool like uh, you know they'll Pope Francis I think baptized some huge number of martyrs or something and that's great but in terms of like if we just go back a hundred years, right? And say, since 1922, how many saints have come? There are so many modern mm. saints. Is it, uh, who's the the guy, the the computer guy? He's buried in his Nikes. Come on, what's his name? Uh, Carlos Acutis. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. He was like, you know him. I do not. So he's yeah, a saint who literally Italy. built a website on Eucharistic miracles. Mm. Really? That's oh, cool. When was he canonized? Oh, recently, recently, but when did he die? 2006, maybe? Yeah. 2015? Yeah. Is, yeah. it the, is it the kid, the teenager? Yeah, he's yeah. incorruptible. He's wearing yeah. blue jeans and like a t-shirt. I think he died in like 2015, if I'm not mistaken. No? Okay, I'm mistaken. Oh. I feel like it was a little <laughs> Yeah. 2006? Yes. yes. Yeah. Did you just know that or did you lie to me earlier about your Google? Okay, oh. cool. All right. His brain is Google. Awesome. Yeah. No, I dig yeah. it. Mark, what you got? Another one I've got is uh, St. Barbara um, that's known for anything that goes boom. So like fireworks, <laughs> lightning. Nice. Um, Does it say that? Is that she the patron saint of things that go boom? Yeah. That, that's Barbara what, that's, go that's, boom. That's, that's okay. what it said. Cool. That's what it said. And Barbara her, go boom. Yeah. 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 So then it, her father had forced her to uh, get married and he refused. And then so he had her actually beheaded. And then soon after, it's, it's almost kind of like lightning kind of strikes twice because soon after he actually got struck by lightning and, and was killed. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And now she's yeah. the patron saint of things that go boom, <laughs> boom. because yeah. her father was hit with a lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 See? There, no. There's so many. Um, oh, man. Uh, let's see. She's what about one. Saint, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wilgefortis? Wilgefortis? I don't think he cares. Looks like an old, okay. yeah, um, looks like an old English thing. Uh, she is the patron saint. She. Of, uh, she, she is I don't think she cares. Sorry. <laughs> she's the patron saint of bearded women because her <laughs> father tried to marry her to a Muslim king, even though she made a vow to chastity and virginity. So she prayed that she would become repulsive and she grew a beard. And then her dad had her crucified. Oh, so. I feel like that's an overreaction, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a little was bit. Was he Christian? Her no, father? I don't oh. think he okay. was. Okay. No. And God gifted her with a, with a, a beard. beautiful beard. Yeah. I watched The Greatest Showman. I can, could she sing really well? <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> this but. is me. This is me. That's what she said to her father before she got <laughs> 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 Producer Ben, did you find anything? Did you Google what is there not a patron saying of? Apparently, Google doesn't know 
So I think there dinosaurs. is a patron saint. Is there a patron saint of dinosaurs? You're not here. I'm going to look that I'm up I'm sorry, Ben, to keep giving me requests. <laughs> You're good. Can we just all stare at you in silence? Because if there's one thing that sounds really good on the radio, it's just like long stretches of silence. Yeah. yeah. Everybody loves a long stretch of silence. <laughs> I feel all bad right. for the Spotify listeners because they can't even like see the shot of just Ben. Yeah. So. <laughs> you have to see Ben to really get yeah, the He's really grass. doing a great job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mary. Oh, okay. Um, I, well, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about um, my confirmation saint because I think she is a baddie, and that is Miss Saint Philomena. <laughs> oh, um, Saint Philomena. She, she is a she is a baddie. She's I can <laughs> <laughs> I concur. Yeah. Um, basically, like her little story is she was thirteen, which I think is very important to understand, and that's why I have so much respect. Um, but she was thirteen, and her dad tried to marry her off to this king, but she wanted to say chase. So she refused and rejected the king. And obviously he was upset about this. So he <clears throat> threw her into jail and the Blessed Mother actually came and visited her. And she's like, hey, this is going to be rough, but like the kingdom of heaven waits for you. So it was a really powerful moment for her. So then they try flogging her and torturing her. And then all the wounds just magically heal. Because she was a baddie. She, she was, was a baddie. Right. So all of them heal. And they're like, that's weird. So then they tie an anchor around her neck and throw her in the water to try and drown her. But then the angels come and like untie the anchor and then she floats back up and they're like, that's suspicious. <laughs> so then they <laughs> tie her to a post and then they have like arrows shooting at her. And then like, again, angels come and they like redirect the arrows to come back and shoot back at the archer. That's so <laughs> what cool. <in> the world? <laughs> yeah. This is like an anime show fight. Yeah. So maybe you should stop trying to kill this person. Yeah, that would take be, a hint. That would be the thought. Wait, and then what happens? I'm into this. <laughs> and then they decapitated her. Did that so work? This, yeah, that worked. The axe wasn't <laughs> redirected or anything. Maybe that's why so many saints were decapitated is because they learned over the centuries it was like the only thing that kind of stuck. Yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. else, like angels would intervene Except with the te- decapitation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. It didn't even work for him. Yeah. I like that a lot. And he just stayed alive. No. Oh, some of them Have are- you noticed a pattern with the female saints and their their evil dads trying to marry them off? Yeah. To There's a lot people? of There's evil dads. Yeah. yeah. What is That's up with that? Theme. The dads yeah. need to also come to Christ. I don't know. Back what's up to with Disney. That. Like we need to have fewer evil stepmothers and more evil regular dads. Right. Who want you to marry Muslim princes? Exactly. I don't know if that would work like politically <laughs> correct wise now, yeah. but I would watch that. Movie. I-, I could pitch it to well, Disney. Ben's got well, I've got patron our uh, patron state of dinosaurs. <laughs> it's Saint Augustine. Um, what? No I feel way. like he's a patron saint like 75,000 not, not like patron saint of dinosaurs, patron saint of paleontology. So what? I don't think it really counts. Okay. But That's you know, close enough. Close enough. He, close enough, he didn't guess. get one shout out in Jurassic Park either, which is ridiculous. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I wonder why. We should is protest. It Paleontologists? It should be in the credits. Know, Jeff Goldblum stole the show. That's fine. He did. Yeah. I am on team Jeff Goldblum <laughs> all day. Over Augustine though? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but but we're, we're actually planning on having Jeff on the show next week. So get pumped for that. We're going to have Jeff Goldblum in studio. Actually, wow. he's coming after the break. He's in the yeah. bathroom right now. So he'll be <laughs> out here. We're going to replace one of you with Jeff Goldblum. And if you're listening, Jeff is going to do his best impression of one of our guests. And you're going to have to figure out which one it is. So make sure that you, you comment, comment down below which one you think Jeff Goldblum <laughs> is. Jeff Goldblum. All right. We are it's going fantastic. to take a break here in a minute before we close out. All the saints and angels and archangels pray for us. Pray for us. Uh, pray you for are us. listening to AM 1160, The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. We will be back in a minute. All right, we are back. You're listening to AM 1160, The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. This is Honest to God. Happy All Saints Day to everybody. And not to derail the conversation from saints, because we've got some great stories. But back on the Gaston thing from Beauty mm-hmm. and the Beast, mm-hmm. I was talking to Jaira off air a second ago and uh, about how really incredibly weird and providential it seems. <laughs> and so I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit is telling us to go down the Gaston I rabbit agree. hole I agree. a little further mary swanson does have a dissenting opinion on gaston mm-hmm. and that's okay because mary is wrong about, about this particular <laughs> yeah. issue she's allowed to be um, wrong you know get, tell what were you saying mary okay i just want to look at the juxtaposition that's the word um <laughs> between the two right so we have a beginning shot of gaston throwing one of bell's books into the mud and not the her perfect she, guy i'm not saying he's a perfect guy i'm just saying i don't want to argue others. that does make him a perfect guy but we'll, we'll, we'll go back to we'll that get there. okay yeah. We, we hate yes. books. No, that's not true. <laughs> yes. uh, so okay. We do not hate books. Well, anyways, so as an avid reader myself, I'd be pretty upset if somebody, t- if okay, if Mark tossed my favorite book into the mud. Yeah, he's that, a jerk. I'm okay with him being a jerk. That's questionable, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. But then the beast goes and gives her a whole library where and she by the, can read. And by the beast, you're referring once again to the literal <laughs> the monster. monster. Yeah. Actually, not like a metaphorical monster. He's literally a giant hairy mm -hmm. buffalo. Mm -hmm. But she has all those like thousands of books in there. She really doesn't have to spend that much time with him. Well, uh, I hope she doesn't want to spend time outdoors <laughs> because she's locked That's in his house against all about her will. Escape it. She can travel to all these distant lands. This is a really bad message to anybody who's <laughs> listening right now mm -hmm. and might be locked in a bedroom and uh, unable to, to leave by a monster mm -hmm. who lives in a castle in the woods. Yeah. Jaira, I'm interested in your you thoughts. You know, I the thing about the film Beauty and the Beast is that it, it's not necessarily about the certain things that Gaston does because you can't you can't take the movie at face value. You have right. to understand that it's a it you know it was written by a feminist woman who wanted to talk about female independence. So her framing of the movie is Gaston is the caricature of a male that no one should ever be like, and Belle is the kind of woman that everyone should strive to be. Independent, um, doesn't care, doesn't listen to her dad, first of all, which is not a good sign. Not okay. Um, yeah. Only mm -hmm. interested in not only knowledge, but just like reading romance novels, which is not really that. That's a great point. So she's like, she's in this perpetual infancy because she can't graduate from like baby literature to like anything great. And, you know, Gaston coming and taking away her book, he's basically just saying, you as a woman should not be pursuing knowledge and independence above all things. You should be focusing on being a productive part of your village, which she doesn't want to do, which you should be. She wants she wants to be a recluse who she sits wants to be a recluse and who sits around trashy romance and doesn't novels. listen to her dad. And Gaston says, you know what? The, I like this girl. She's pretty. I can save her. So he goes, maybe, you know, maybe his social skills could use a little work. Maybe his wooing is not his technique is, and, you know, it's interesting. But, you know, Belle her decision to he was he was worried about her he right. knew that this reading that this going on this intellectual journey was going to ruin her <laughs> and what happens she comes back and says i'm in love with this monster in the woods he's like i told you the romance novels were gonna do this to you Boom. all right uh so just for the record we are gonna have gyra back on this show really soon for a whole hour where just she and i are gonna shout back and forth about this i i do think i will wait because i know i do want to make sure we get some saint stuff in but the next episode maybe i really want to talk about scar maybe we have time at the end yeah. We're gonna maybe we'll cancel the popsicle sticks and do a Oh no. Scar yeah. Oh you wanna okay, fine. Done. Oh, we got popsicle we got sticks. popsicle sticks for sure. <laughs> um but let's pick up where we left off on the saints. Yeah, I'm as sorry, I went, to, I went off on a rabbit hole. No, I'm all about it. I would love to have an episode where we just poke holes in sort of modern pop culture children's oh, media. Like mm -hmm. let's absolutely do that the kind all. of media that we you know we grew up on. It's a whole psyop, you know. Yeah. Exactly. I have it a whole is. lot to say about the Little Mermaid, but that's that's for another day. So game. true. You yeah. weren't allowed to watch the Little Mermaid. As you shouldn't. No. Talk about disobeying her father who was also right yeah. the entire yeah, that's, time. That's what I was about to say. It's like if we're going to be talking about that with Belle, we Ariel. Di yeah, Disney raised us, <laughs> raised women to not listen to their fathers, and that's their entire message during their entire movie. Man, yeah, we are a hundred percent going to do that. Ben, yeah. do, you, do you support that? Can we talk to Janice in the studio about? We'll we'll discuss it. Okay, right. <laughs> I can't make a definitive statement. Ben, ben, ben keeps us all honest here on honest <laughs> to God. To God. All right, let's start. Let's start with Mark. Mark, I feel like you haven't got enough playtime for your Saints. What, what we got? Somebody good? Somebody exciting? I guess another another story that I have was, um, let me see. This was so. This was a Saint Mar Margaret of Antioch who was born to a pagan family at the end of the third century. And she converted to Catholicism at, as a young girl, and she took a, a vow of, of celibacy. And then there was this uh, kind of going back to that theme of we're trying to marry the, uh, the the girls off and stuff like that. So this pagan man, this Roman governor, came along, insisted on marrying her, and then so she refused. And then so he ended up locking her up in prison. And then this is where kind of things start to kind of get interesting. Where when she's in prison, that's where she's kind of having these different like torture sessions with like what Satan kind of the devil kind of like tempting right. her and stuff oh, like not, that. Oh, she's not being tortured by the Romans. You're saying the devil is, are you talking about like spiritual or? Are you... Yeah, kind of like kind of spiritual okay. warfare and stuff like right. that where the Satan's there and kind of like tempting her. And then so Satan um, appeared to Margaret in kind of the guise of kind of a, of a dragon. And then this, and then this is where, um, and then, then, Satan actually like so he appears as a dragon and then so then he eats her obviously oh, he likes, oh. he's he just he doesn't like chew her up into pieces and stuff like that right. but swallows her actually whole and then so she happened to have a cross like around her neck and then so with the with the cross she was able to kind of take the cross and kind of like cut out from the dragon cool. to, to yeah. be able to like escape and get out of the, uh, and escape and kind of get out of the dragon's stomach um so that was kind of a 
kind of really that's kind of interesting, that's really so cool, cool, crazy story. I just I finished kind of reading about. Dracula recently, and mm-hmm. something that's, that's really one. cool. No, that, yeah. it connects back in, mm-hmm. right? And something that's really cool about Dracula that you don't get in a lot of the modern pop culture stuff is how, and they're they're Anglicans, right? Mm-hmm. But how incredibly like christian it is mm-hmm. right and these were you know this was victorian era anglicanism sort of like modern high anglicanism so it's, it's very catholic in appearances right mm. they, they do all the right things they believe very so <coughs> excuse me very similar to the things that we do and there's there's all these scenes where they're talking about taking the host and using mm-hmm. like placing the host on top of the casket so the devil can't escape mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and all the yeah. and all these sacramentals and stuff that they right. i was just thinking about that when you were yes. talking about her cutting her way out of the dragon mm-hmm. with, yeah, the cross. with the cross um, yeah. There's a lot of good prison stories with mm-hmm. the with the oh, saints. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. During the times when they would, you know, be locking people up for being Christian. I want mm-hmm. a. I really do. Seriously, want this. You know the story of uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas when his brothers lock him in the room with the prostitute. I don't know. That I don't know that story. Oh, it's a great yeah. story. I want to get this commission. That's what I was going to say. I want to pick. I want a painting of this. So. Thomas Aquinas wants to join a monastery. He wants to become a Dominican, right? Mm-hmm. And his father and his brothers, his family say, no, you can't do that. We can't do that. And they're trying to convince him to, to not to do it. And eventually it gets to the point where they literally barricade him in a room with a prostitute. And the prostitute mm-hmm. is supposed to do the kinds of things that prostitutes do. And mm-hmm. it ends, they finally let him, let them both out when he pulls a fire poker out and starts chasing the prostitute <laughs> around with the fire poker <laughs> to avoid her being able to tempt him. And I want a beautiful, like, commissioned piece of artwork of Thomas Aquinas like chasing after the <laughs> prostitute with a flaming hot poker. I That's only, amazing. I've only ever seen this in the movie, but St. Philip Neri has a story with prostitutes as well. There was a, there was someone who was trying to frame him because they didn't like him for some mm-hmm. reason. And so they like set him up. They like, he like paid prostitutes to like be in the same room with him. So and then he like told, he was like spreading rumors and he was like, oh, Cardinal, you must come with me. St. Philip Neri is not who you think he is. They walk in there and they're like on their knees crying as he's like <laughs> preaching <laughs> the gospel awesome. to them. <laughs> I was like, is that a thing that actually Yeah, they're cutting I, they, they, they have the bed sheets over them and he's like, repent from your sins. Yeah, yeah it's so good. beautiful. It's, yeah. uh, that's in a movie? It's in yeah. a, the movie. It's a movie. It's in Italian about St. Philip Neri. It's called uh, Preferisco Paradiso. Uh, I Prefer Heaven or yeah. something like that. That's awesome. Great. Philip Neri is my uh, confirmation saint. So. Okay, so I do want to talk about that. I would yeah. love to go through really quickly and say, and ask who's your confirmation saint and why because Mm -hmm. this is kind of personal to me because i had a sort of a a reversion later in life right and i was confirmed and i have no idea who my confirmation saint was and i need to go back to my parish right saint mary's parish in america's georgia a little bitty parish and dig through some files and figure it out i sort of retook on ignatius of leola um not because of the Jesuitness, but because of how <laughs> awesome St. Ignatius of Loyola is. It was amazing. Uh, when I when I came back into the church. Uh, but so I'm always really curious about people's confirmation saints and why they picked that saint. We already heard from Mary. Let's hear from Miriam. Confirmation saint, who and why? My confirmation saint is St. Jude, the mm-hmm. apostle. Um, and it's just because I found myself going to him more and more for things because I kept thinking about my the intentions that I was praying for just seemed like, is this ever going to happen? Right. Um, and so since he's the patron saint of like lost causes, impossible things, um, I was just constantly going to him for for asking him to intercede for me. Like this seems hopeless to me. So can you can you please ask God about it? So, yeah. No, that's beautiful. Um, but we, yeah. We're, that's, my wife just finished a novena to Mary Undur of Knots the same, with this house mm-hmm, that we're building mm-hmm. right now. And like not even joking, she finished it and our land disturbance permit and all this stuff from the county like came through. Oh my god! Now we've hit another set of roadblocks and so now we're, it's time to do another novena. <laughs> but it's really, it was really oh, amazing. Yeah. I mean, I bet everybody here, we could spend the rest of the, the hour going through talking about like um, St. Uh, St. Anthony stories. Oh my uh, goodness. I was weird. about to say, don't even, don't even get yeah. St. Yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. He's clutch. Oh, he's, it's oh yeah. Ridiculous. It's in, unreal. He's on it. And there are times where I, I have, I've been looking for something for like an hour and like out of spite, I'm like just not praying to him because I'm like, it's just not fair. Like there's no way he could be in the house. Right. And then I'll be like, all right, fine. St. Anthony. Like one second later, it's right mm-hmm. there. I'm like, how? <laughs> I have weird. a yeah. very recent St. Anthony story, like Please days tell. ago. Um, I almost. I've lost. been watching our, our Instagram page, and viewers want to hear more producer Ben. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We, yeah. Awesome. I, I know. I personally want to hear more. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> recently, I was on a trip to out to Wyoming to visit my girlfriend, and big on the way shout back, out to Wyoming Catholic College. Big shout out to Wyoming always. Catholic. Yeah. Great place. Really weird dorm environment. <laughs> Lots of shirtless dudes. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> 
We're not going to tell that story. Just keep going. No, I don't need to. Um, so on the way back, you know, everything's going great. Great week. Fantastic pictures. Um, great views. Went climbing. Awesome. On the way back, you know, 12 hours of travel from Lander, Wyoming back to Atlanta, Georgia. Did you drive out there? Um, no, I flew. Okay. Um, so it was two connecting flights. Um, it would have been 29 hours if I drove. Yeah. But on the way back. I get to the airport and then I'm going to meet my parents at a train station. So I hop on the train at the airport and start riding the train. And then I like have like, I haven't, I get up at 4 a.m. that morning. So I don't have much sleep in me. So I'm a little delirious. So I realize, huh, I don't think this is my train. So I get up, I grab my suitcase and I walk off the train. Okay. Train store closed, train leaves. Two or three minutes later, I realize, huh. My backpack isn't around my shoulders. Oh. <laughs> that had like your camera that equipment. That had my right? camera equipment oh, and my no. laptop and a hard drive with all my videos from the last like seven or eight years. Very expensive. Oh, so backpack. like $3,000 worth of stuff. In Not counting the sentimental value. Of Not counting that, yeah. sentimental value. Um, so I'm freaking out, you know, and I immediately like I call my ride and I tell them I'm not going to get back on the train. Just come pick me up from here. So I'm just sitting there, you know, it's going to be another 20 minutes before my ride gets there. So I just decide to pray a rosary and then I'm not thinking about St. Anthony, but someone reminds me of St. Anthony. So I just immediately at that point, like every hour or so at that point, I'm praying to St. Anthony and I get a call from the MARTA police saying, hey, we can't find your bag. It's nowhere on any of these trains. And, you know, everything's I'm just so downtrodden at that point. And then I go to work that evening and I get a call from a random person. Don't know who this person is saying, hey, I found your bag on the train. That's so cool. Whoa. I, Holy crap. And this is obviously tongue in cheek, but I'm pretty sure if I found your bag on the MARTA, uh -huh. I would feel obligated to just steal it. No, yeah, me too. Happens that's what happens on the, on the MARTA. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to. I would just feel like compulsion to. I should probably take this and pawn all this stuff. Absolutely. Off. But <laughs> since then, like every night, I've been praying like a special just St. Anthony pray for me prayer just because, uh, you know, he was looking out for me. Like, yeah, really he's got your back. You really... Really oh yes, uh -huh. yeah. that's really cool. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Jaira, yeah. um, uh, we uh, your confirmation saint. My confirmation saint is Saint Philip Neri. Um, I learned after I learned a lot about him, and after watching that movie, that was really good. It, and this was years before I got mm -hmm. confirmed. But then after I just. And sort of cultivated a devotion to him and I just felt like it was right. And it's funny, Miriam's is like, she had a lot of hopeless causes in her life, but St. Philip Neri sort of represents the opposite of the kind of person I am. He's always laughing, he's always full of joy, he's very humble, and those are like the opposite of me. I'm angry all the time and I'm full of pride. So I was like, I, I hear what that. if yeah. what if I chose a saint that was like the opposite of my virtue so that I could cultivate that and then go come to some kind of moderation? If I chose a saint that was more like me, it'd probably be like Padre Pio or something. But right. I was like, too much of the same energy. <laughs> I'm sure. just going to go with Philip Neri. And I think he makes me a lot more humble. And I just want to be the kind of person that is so joyful that you want to know why. And then that is why you would come to the faith. We come back to that point over and over and over again in terms of evangelization and how so much of it, I mean, we can, we can sit here and talk all day long about conversions of the mind, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's great. And it's easier for us to do as Catholics. That's, a, that's why I'm Catholic today is because we can break that stuff down, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, if you think that you've got some argument or something, sort of like we were saying at the beginning of the last episode, right, where you think, oh, I finally got the church about this or that or the other, uh, some monk already answered it perfectly 1500 years ago mm -hmm. in response mm -hmm. to some heresy from Southern France or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And it's, that's a beautiful thing about it, but it's that conversion of the heart that's more important. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And the mind is great. God gave us an intellect. We need to use it, but that conversion of the heart is what's a, what's a really big deal. And I think the best way to do that 90% of the time is being joyful and happy yeah. and then be willing to tell people why yeah. when they ask. Yeah. Mark, what yes. confirmation say? Uh, who and why? So St. Patrick's my confirmation saint. Right. And so I was, I was born on St. Patrick's Day, and it's also my great-grandmother's birthday as well. So it kind of wow, runs wow. in the family. So to kind of And you're wearing green. Tribute. And I'm wearing green. And you had a lot of hats earlier. Yes, I, I did. I had, okay. some, I had some earlier. <laughs> I but, dig it. But with the Halloween theme, I wanted to – it wasn't really the St. Patrick's Day <laughs> theme, but maybe for a St. Patrick's Day show, I could – Bust those out. You, and you bring come those back and we'll do the St. Patrick's Day show. show no, that's sure. great. I uh, mm -hmm. my dad's actually a Patrick. I'm oh, a, okay. I'm a, I'm a big fan of of St. Patrick. My mm -hmm. the the reason why there was any Catholicity in my life at all, living in a little bitty town in the middle of nowhere in South mm -hmm. Georgia, is because my great grandmother was a messenger for Michael Collins and the Irish Republican Army when they were oh. rebelling against 
the British mm -hmm. and she had a price put on her head because mm -hmm. she would like, they were trying to find her and they like, she had a price on her, oh, like wow. a bounty so on her. Bounty, yeah. And so she ran to the United States and then she met my great grandfather who both of his parents were Irish. And so that's, I, I always really appreciate how St. Patrick has somehow, you know, St. Patrick going to Ireland has somehow over the millennia filtered mm -hmm. down to some little kid hanging out in the middle of Podunk, South Georgia, mm -hmm. like being interested in Catholicism and then converting. And now the ripples that that is going to make with my own children and everything. That's yeah. amazing. That's really cool. It's really cool. That. We did everybody. Do we do yours? Oh, yours was uh, Saint, 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 Saint Genesius. Genesius. Yeah. That's cool. um, why, although, yeah. if I could change it, I totally would. Because I was. <laughs> no, I, Ben, why? that's a dangerous thing to say. You're my, Saint Genesius is upset and with you right I now. I really, really like Saint Genesius. Like his conversion story, which I didn't know until like three years after I got confirmed. Did you just Google patron saint of something you liked? Yes, I did. Okay. That is what I did. Um, and that is the reason that I would change it. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because I was in seventh grade when I chose him. Um, and I feel like I'm a different person now. So if I That's could fair. change Did it, you want to be an actor, to... a comedian, or a clown? Um, well, I looked up Patriot State of Filmmakers and he was what came okay, up. Yeah. So he kind of yeah. fits into that right. genre. Um, I would change it to St. Faustina if I could though. Mm -hmm. um, because... I really dig it when guys pick girl saints and girls pick guy saints. Yeah. I just think mm -hmm. it's cool. Mm -hmm. I don't we know. both I... picked guys. Oh, they're also the names of our cousins, which is a little bit funny. We have yeah. two, we have a cousin named yes. Philip and a cousin named Jude. And my mom was like, is there a cousin thing going on here? Yeah. We were like, no, yeah. we just like these saints. That's cool. I like that a lot. I have a, I have a question for y'all though. Do you know why we take saints when we get confirmed, like to be our patron? be our name Ooh. Are, are you like is this like a trivia question it's, like a, trivia. Trivia? it's kind of like a trivia because i didn't know it's and i was researching oh okay I like, no oh i goodness. i don't absolutely no um it's wait the, mary does do you i don't know for certain i just always assumed that it was like a guardian <clears throat> angel kind of thing where it's like some like a saint that's watching out for you like a saint mm. that you can direct your prayers to if you don't ever want to like go because you know sometimes you're like oh i'm scared so you'll like pray to your saint who's got your back i don't know i've always viewed it more as like a little friendship between yeah. the two cool. definitely yeah. well now miriam's gonna there's, tell you why there's definitely wrong. an aspect of it but that was really nice miriam you can just, you can just go eh. <laughs> <laughs> no that's definitely a big a big part of it but um we take saints to be our patrons as part of being confirmed because in the bible in the early church a new name represented a new phase in one's life with a great devotion to God. Well, mm. that's, you can see Abram, that in the Bible, Abraham. right? Yeah. 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 So, Just call Paul, me Phil. Paul. That's my name. Yeah. I like that. All right, yeah, Philip. Like call me Phil. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it a lot. <laughs> but yeah. I do want to hear about the St. Faustina reason, though. Me too. Ooh, uh, so... I was living in Chicago last year for like five, six months. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was there, I got really, really into praying the Divine Mercy Chaplain. Mm -hmm. mm. And the the um, production company that I was at was a Catholic production company. And they had a chapel in-house. Okay. And it was the St. Faustina Chapel. And so I had never heard of St. Faustina, but I like started looking into her and started looking at the Divine Mercy Chaplet and it became like a nightly thing to pray the D Divine Mercy Chaplet. And I don't know, it just became this like really comforting thing that I was when I was away from home for the first time in my life. Um, it was just like this really comforting presence mm -hmm. um, throughout cool. the whole thing. Yeah, I like, wow. And that goes back to the conversion of heart thing too. Yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. we can talk so much. And I just am on this kick lately because that... That's a tough thing for me because I, for the longest time, sort of did this radical, you know, sola fide, the Protestant idea of sola fide is, is, is heretical, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I sort of took this total opposite in response of like, no, it's sola intellecte. My, my Latin's not great, but it was just like, no, I can reason my, because I can reason, I can use philosophy to determine that God exists or that truth exists, that God exists. I can use historical evidence to demonstrate the resurrection of Christ mm -hmm. was real. I can, and then I can use, I can go through history and apologetics and the early church fathers to prove that this church exists. And so I can say, all right, so if truth exists, God exists, this guy died. Then he came back from the dead, said he was God, founded this church, we should be members of this church. And that all made sense and very black and white to me. Uh, but there was always still sort of this hole in this emptiness, like that connection between head and heart was never fully made. Um, and it's really great to know Christ from a scholarly perspective, but Jesus didn't come up down, right? Jesus didn't come to earth. The incarnation didn't take place so that we could have really good philosophical discussions about, you know, Thomism or something, right? right, right he right. came here because he loves me individually mm -hmm. and wants a relationship mm -hmm. with me. Something the Protestants get right is that yeah. personal mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the thing they so get important. wrong is that we, we get that through the Eucharist. And so when we have a, we're like, you know, it's like you need to, you know, come to Christ. Like I go to Christ every time I go to Mass. I literally like, become a tabernacle for Christ. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. the most amazing thing. So, yeah. the Eucharist is how it's the source and sum of our lives, and how the Protestants think of it more as a symbol, and how mm -hmm. we think of it as truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
We and need to have an episode about the Eucharist. We absolutely yeah. should do an episode about the, the Protestants Eucharist. do this thing where they say something that's technically correct, but they mean it in a the incorrect way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I'm talking to with my Protestant friends, I'll say something. I'll be like, "That's true, but I know how you mean it, so you're yeah. wrong." Right? Yeah, yeah. I I was at at my campus a lot of times. It's like the great what is it called? I don't know. It's some like the great exchange. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. They'll have like people from the great exchange coming in talking to like asking like oh have you been saved and like all this mm -hmm. and that what is the great exchange it's like so basically it's i think it's baptist if i'm okay. not mistaken um but they come from a baptist perspective and they give you like this little questionnaire and they ask you questions about your spirituality and then you have like a discussion about it basically and so i had this old, like he was an older man so it was really hard to discuss that with him but i mean we tried his best he was very nice and there were like a couple of times where he was like asking like you know do you believe in like heaven and hell? I was like, I believe in heaven, hell, and purgatory. Nice. And <laughs> not only that, I believe yeah. in more than that. Both and, yeah. and then the cast the, the yeah. Yeah, and there was another like thing. He was like, um, have you have you been saved? I was like, yeah, like I've I've been baptized and I've been confirmed I and I'm like, saved. I will be saved. I am, I am being saved. Right, yeah, I'm looking like, at my salvation. I'm Absolutely. good. Thank you though. And he's like, because he's like, you can do it right here and right now by just saying this. And I was like, I've already done it. <laughs> I'm good yeah. and he just kept kind of trying to argue with me and saying it was like we're not meant to do it through works and like it's all and I was like that's great I was like you you know like I'm not faulting you like that's how you do it and this is how I do it and that's that's okay like we're we're different on how we interpret things but well I you know. had um I had to sign a statement of faith one time in order to book a beach house. Uh, and it was a, a beach house that was owned by a Baptist church and uh, you guys have been on a beach with oh, me, yeah. Ben and Mary. And we had to sign a statement of faith. And so I really had to look into the the wording because I'm not about to I'm, I'm right. not about to right. commit heresy for the sake of a cheap beach house, right? Yeah. There's a Baptist church that owns a beach mm -hmm. house, and I won't throw it out there on the off chance that they ever get wind of this, and it sounds like, you know, I am I did something I shouldn't have, which I didn't. But I, I read through it, and I was reading that whole, Jesus Christ, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior, and going through that sort of formula that they want to say. And at the end, I was like, yeah, I can say all of this. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, Jesus Christ, I do accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I do want a relationship with you, right? Mm -hmm. I do yeah, want to spend yeah. eternity mm -hmm. with you in heaven and all of these things. The difference is... And I didn't have to sign something that said, and you understand this is all you have to do and you're going to go to heaven forever and ever no matter what happens. Yeah. Right? I didn't have to sign that yeah. off at the end. So I could I could sign off on it. But it was neat to get to really work through that slowly and think about what they meant when they said it. And you're right. It's mm -hmm. not – that is all correct. Mm -hmm. But it's mm – -hmm. and there's so much more. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right? That's, I totally agree with so many of the things you're saying, but there's so much more. This yeah. ties into the, the same thing perfectly because the Protestants will be so – like they're so – it's – they – act like it's so hyper individualized and so sure. they'll be like why do you talk to the saints why do you go directly to god it's almost like you're meeting someone or you're dating someone and you know you're like why can't i just date you why do i have to meet your mom <laughs> right. and it's like, do you not awesome. love do you not love me do you not want to meet my family yeah joining the catholicism mm -hmm. is like joining a big family and we're all here for each other that's what we mean when we say communion of saints that we're all here mm -hmm. there are so many people that have died in christ and are will die in christ in the future and you can die in christ right now and right. we're all in it together <laughs> and it doesn't have to be this this oh, you're on your own road kind of thing we're right. all family and like i think that's a beautiful thing yeah i've never understood the opposition to to saints in terms of you know pictures of because my house looks like it's basically designed to scare the snot out of mormons when they come by right? <laughs> they just walk in and they're just like mary jesus every saint that ever lived icons all over the place right? i i like that i yeah. dig it and you'll have a conversation with protestants and they'll be upset about that they'll say that's idolatry and mm -hmm. I, I always want to say well are you worshiping your grandmother there's a picture of her in right. your house yeah. right it's hey these are these people who have finished the race yeah. right yeah. and they're there it's so hopeful and just like i have a uh, all four of my grandparents have passed away mm -hmm. and you know i will i'll talk to my grandfather right i'll talk right, to my, right. my 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 uh my grandfather's on both sides and you know my assumption i pray mm -hmm. and i hope mm -hmm. right that they're that they're in heaven and i'll I have little conversations, and I'm sure Protestants do that with mm -hmm. dead relatives, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Hey, mom, you know, I yeah. know that this happened, yeah. and I love you, and I miss yeah. you. Mm -hmm. and it's the exact same thing. We're saying these people are in heaven, and they were really, really, really good at it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're hanging out with Jesus all day. You mm -hmm. don't have a whole lot going on. Yeah. So yeah. 
please pray for me. That's what yeah. my my dad said that to his mom, who's a Protestant, and he she was like, I wanted my mom to know something, and she had died, and you know she was a Christian, and my dad was like, Well, do you think mom's your mom's in heaven? And she was like, Yeah. He was like, Just ask Jesus to tell her. Yeah. Why not? She's there, and she just she couldn't do it because she was like it was so close to you know what she thought was you know speaking to the dead or something, even though they're more alive in Christ than we are. That's what I was going right. to bring up, talking about like it just feels disrespectful, like you you see these people living these holy lives, these Christ like lives, and they die, and you're. I mean, as a Protestant, like you believe that if you accept Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, like you're done. So seeing these people have done so much more dying for Christ, right. even, you know, for a fact they're in heaven. Why would you say that they're more dead now than now yeah, that they were the then? Right. Conjuring of the, it's not a conjuring not of a the conjuring dead thing. Of it's a, it's, we know they're alive. They're yeah, in heaven. Yeah, they're oh, with, right. they're literally with. One guy I talked to, he, he tried to use that as like an own. He'd be like, okay, well, can you talk to C.S. Lewis? And I was like, the point of canonization is that the point, like, we're sure we're talking to people who are in heaven. Mm -hmm. right. And if you had your grandma who died in Christ and you thought she was in heaven, there would be nothing wrong with saying, hey, what's up? Say, you know, yeah. How Pray is it for me. In and heaven? also, I'm totally down with talking to C.S. Lewis. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 100%. Same. Absolutely. But I also, like it's not, it's not, on. it's not a. St. Jude, please give me the grace to like, it's like, no, right. it's St. Jude, please ask God to give me, me the grace. grace. Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's like you have this, this, uh, I always do this, you're, you're a subject in a kingdom mm -hmm. and there's the, there's the king and he loves you and you're his subject and you can ask him for things, mm -hmm. but he's got a whole bunch of friends that are like kind of in his <laughs> yeah, circle. I like <laughs> and you can like, you're like, you're even closer with them. So you can just be like, Hey, could you like talk to the king for me? Yeah. Get this thing. And you know, like, and you know, you know, you know, like the biggest one, like if you really, really want to make sure the king listens to your request, you go to his mom. Go talk to his mom. Why would you not ask her? Oh my goodness. So y'all, I could do this all day, <laughs> Seriously. But I'm getting a little wrap up from over here. Mm -hmm. We are already we're already over time. I think we're over time. We have yeah. to for the sake of Miriam still mm -hmm. do the the popsicle the popsicle sticks. sticks. Yeah. Let's do it. Miriam wants to do popsicle right. sticks. Miriam, and before we do popsicle sticks, were you the one who reached out to us over YouTube? Yeah. So a big shout out to to Miriam. And if you're listening to this right now, Miriam, we didn't know Miriam from anybody, and then yeah. she she left a comment, and we ended up getting in touch with her, and she's here today with her sister. So yeah. if that's you, uh, feel free to re re uh, leave a comment. Send us a DM. We would love or to have email you us yeah. at youngadult at thequestatlanta.com and we can get you on the show. Is it young yeah. adult singular? Young adult singular. There's one young adult. I mm -hmm. like it. Yep. All, right. All right. So let's grab popsicle sticks. We'll do we'll do purest popsicle stickage. If you have one that is you're not comfortable with, it's all good. Somehow they're always the same thing <laughs> every time anyway. So there's like 50 popsicle sticks and we always draw the same two. Um, nah, that's not a good one. I'm going to pick a new one. Uh, <laughs> Mark, you start. Would you rather be a horrible dancer or a horrible singer? You've gotten that one before, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, Do we have, have to answer the one we have? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Unless you really don't want to. In no, it's fine. I guess probably the hor horrible dancer. Why? Yeah. Um, it's not implying that you're a good singer. So you're not going to be any better than you are right now. But you would the rather conditions. be. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, conditions are conditions important. Are important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, dancer? Uh, probably, more the, probably more the dancer. I, I'm, I'm a good, I guess, because I'm a good singer. Uh, you might as well not screw up the good thing. Right. Okay. Right. No, I like it. Exactly. I like it. Yeah. All right, Jaya. Yeah. Uh, mine says, "Would you never? Would you rather never sweat again or never feel cold again?" It's obviously never sweat again. Okay. I so, would, I was, I would so, that. so, and I've, I've I've put conditions on this one before, yeah. but it is no, really <laughs> it really is really important that we do this. Okay. All right. You literally don't have the ability to sweat, and all the physiological effects of that mm -hmm. are present. Still never sweat again. Okay, cool. I'm, I it. think you'll die. Yeah. I'm pretty I mean, sure you'll die if more, you like, go out you know, in the sun. All right. Medical technology has advanced a lot. I'm sure they could make accommodations carry, for me. You could carry around like a little spritzer bottle. Yeah, exactly. I'll okay. do that. Miriam? Which food do you crave most often? Nice. That is so hard because I don't like eating. Um, <laughs> Anything? That No, it's not true. I'm just really picky. Um, Most often, I mean, pizza. Pizza. Pizza's pizza. good. Okay. So good. Any, I, any kind I, of pizza? Any pizza hot takes? Just pepperoni pizza anything else is well actually I really are like you a seven-year-old like what no you can't say just pepperoni pizza well we're no. our, i don't know I our like, house is gluten-free we don't yeah. get any like wheat oh. so oh i hear that okay. yeah um I mean, so like I, any pizza we're just like this is wheat this is, okay yeah. we can eat I this i mean pepperoni peppers olives mushrooms all that stuff is good but i mean i will never say no to a slice of pizza. i'm a firm yeah. defender of pineapple i like pineapple and oh. ham give me a hawaiian oh, pizza. pineapple oh, pizza. Pizza. Yeah. you know what Mary? that's marks and i's biggest <laughs> grievance as a I think that we're going to face as a married couple is ordering pizza because he also <laughs> likes pineapple on pizza and I think it's revolting. But You're wrong. That's I'm it. not, but it's okay. Best pizza I've ever had. 
Shout out to Pat's Place in America's Georgia. White cheese, Alfredo sauce instead of tomato sauce, Ooh. grilled chicken, jalapenos, Ooh. and pineapple. That sounds like wow. a bomb. It all pizza. sounds Spicy good. Spicy and sweet. That doesn't even sound like Mine's pizza. Yeah. yeah. Chicago deep dish pizza is yeah. probably the best. That's it, man. I'm mm. all about it. Oh, yes. I'm all about it. All right, producer Ben, because we're Ooh. at minute 45 of our oh, yeah. um, 25 minute episode. If you were a DJ, what would your DJ name be? Very important question here. Very important <laughs> questions being posed here. I'm honest to God. Um, you know, I just think the first thing that comes to mind is the best thing when you're picking a DJ name. So I, the first thing that came to mind was DJ Slip Slap, and I don't know really know <laughs> yes. why that came to me. I was going to go so with DJ Slip Janky Slap. for you. Ooh, DJ Janky. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I okay, like that's that a good lot. one. Mine's, mine's not very exciting at all. What's worse, laundry or dishes? And I have four children, and my wonderful bride takes care of all of us, so I very seldom do laundry. Uh, I would much rather do dishes because mm-hmm. there's a lot of like poop involved uh-huh. in my house with the laundry, mm-hmm. and somebody's peed on the bed on a regular basis. And, mm-hmm. That yeah. makes sense. I think Told we skipped kids. Mary. Do yeah. we skip you, Mary? Yeah, it's Swanson? okay. Yeah, it's all right. Mary, I'm so sorry. It's You're okay. even wearing corduroy overalls today. I and am. We still switched, uh, skipped you. All right, Mary, what you got? Um, so mine is what would be the worst ingredients to fill a burrito with. And I I think this is going to be controversial, but I don't like beans. No, stop. <gasps> no, stop. I don't like I beans. Stop. No, no. Cut I, I want to make it super clear what, what it said. I think that's I feel the like worst. we've done this one before no, too. I think I'm that's the worst vu. ingredient. I don't no, ever add all, beans. Okay, all things that exist are ingredients, and you're going to go with beans. Okay, well, then I didn't know that was the syringes. Parameter. That'd be pretty bad. <laughs> um, rat poison. I'll say razor blades. Okay, but it has to be food now. I changed it again. Okay. <laughs> Well, then if it's food, can it not be beans? It's beans? I don't like, like beans what about, in my burrito. What about ice cream? What about- I um, feel like that would be better than beans. I'm going to say I don't like beans. Ice cream in a burrito would be interesting, actually. I, you could do it like a choco taco kind yeah, of Yeah, it's kind of like a dessert like salad. Salad. No, okay. Everything else is in it, though. So it's yeah. like chicken I, and sauce. I'd still be down for that. A little sweetness? Yeah. Okay. Vanilla I've had nerds I'm fine with on a guac and sauce of a burger before. You think I'm scared of like- Ice cream. <laughs> it wasn't a personal attack. Uh, all right, that is. We are way over time. We're gonna. That's all right. There. Uh, we're gonna have to cut this way down for radio. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, this was so awesome, guys. Thank you all yeah. for being here. Thank, this you. Was Thank a you. Thank you for having us. Happy All Saints Day to everybody. Happy All Saints. Happy All Saints Day. You are listening to AM 1160, The Quest, Atlanta's Catholic Radio. This is Honest to God. Over and out.